Good morning, and welcome to our Sunday morning worship broadcast for April 26th, 2020. We'd like to see who's ready to worship with us. So if you're joining us live, take a second to say hello in the chat. Or you can post a photo in the chat of you and your family ready for the service to begin. Today, Pastor Sproul will be sharing a message with us entitled, Gone with the Wind. We pray you are blessed. There will also be an update from our church board. But first, join us as we begin with praise and worship. Thanks for joining us. Hey, join us together. Let's sing this together. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood.
uh, it's really easy to be frustrated by the world that we uh, live in. Uh, it's because it's what we see. Uh, it presents itself to us all the time on the news, especially on social media and posts and in our general conversation. What we constantly see influences our mood. It tempts our decisions. We're bombarded by the world. But Paul, talking to the church at Colossae in chapter 3, was talking about what we do when we come to Christ and we live this new life. Here's what he says. Since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven where Christ sits at God's right hand in the place of honor and power. Of course, we'll see the world and hear all about it every day, and we don't want to dwell on that. Instead of focusing on the earthly, Paul tells us to look to the heavenly. Something terrible happens here on earth. We need to look to heaven for the wonderful. Confused by what we see on the earth, we need to look to the Lord for clarity. When we see hopelessness here, we need to look up there. Bad news may be here, but the good news comes from above. This world is discouraging, but you don't have to fix your mind or your eyes on it. Instead, you can choose to place your attention ultimately on what you should dwell on. This is the recommendation of Paul. Set your mind on God in heaven. The view is much better from there. Let's pray and ask God to help us to do that this morning. Heavenly Father, thank you for the privilege in this call to worship this morning to set our sights on something that is greater, that is more lofty, that is more wonderful than anything that we could ever think of here on this earth. We're so grateful to you, Lord, this morning that we can set our sights on what is above us. This world is full of turbulence, full of trouble. And we'll talk about that later on in our message, what we need to do in the midst of our difficulty. But this morning, we set our sights and our minds on things that are above us where Christ sits at a place of honor and majesty. Help us today, Lord, though we may see all the things around us, help us today to see you, Jesus. We pray that you'll calm our fears, you'll calm our discouragements, you'll cause our minds and our hearts to dwell wholly on you, not just today, but in all the days of all the tomorrows that you should give us here on earth. It's with thanksgiving that we pray over this people today and ask God that you will help us to do that, to look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. We give you thanks and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen.
worshiping along with us this morning. At this time, we have some family church updates for you all. So sit back, relax, and then Pastor Sproul is coming to share the word of God. Together, we are making Shrewsbury Assembly a place to believe, a place to belong, and a place to become. Now let's review some updates to the church calendar and some opportunities that we're making available just for you. Hey everyone, tonight at six o'clock, the youth group is having a home scavenger hunt. The winner of this scavenger hunt gets a $15 gift card prize. The message is about what was God's promise when sin entered the world. The link can be found on Facebook at Shrewsbury Assembly Student Ministries or at Ignite Student Ministries on Instagram. Hope to see you there. And now, kids, here's something just for you. Hello, Shrewsbury kids. Listen, we miss you all so very much, and we wish we could see you in person on Sunday morning, but because we can't get together, Joe and I have been having so much fun putting together lessons just for you. Speaking of Joe, he was supposed to show up for these Sunday morning announcements, but I kind of lost him. So make sure to tell me if you see him. But Joe and I have been putting together lessons just for you and are posted and can be found on Shrewsbury Assembly of God's Facebook page. We post every Friday for Fabulous Fridays with Faith because in my opinion, any time that we get to learn about Jesus is a fabulous time. Wait, are you, are you guys saying that you see Joe in behind me? Oh, well, hi, Joe. Thank goodness we found you. You're a little late for Sunday morning announcements. Oh, I'm sorry. Guys, I got stuck in the sock drawer this morning. The morning commute was awful. <laughs> sorry to hear that, Joe. I was just about to tell the kids about the story that was told on last Friday, two days ago, about the story in Matthew chapter 8, where the officer came to Jesus and said... Oh, yeah. He came to Jesus and he said... Listen up, Jesus. My dog is lying home so sick. I need you to come and help him. Uh, no, Joe. The officer's dog wasn't sick. The officer's servant was sick. And the officer said to Jesus that Jesus wouldn't have to come to the house to heal the servant. All Jesus had to do was say that the servant was healed and he would be healed. Yeah. Go watch our video from last Friday and find out what happened to the servant. We learned that trusting in Jesus can bring us joy. Also, one last thing to tell our kids. Okay, Joe, go ahead. When you see a bug on the ground, even if it's shiny and super, super cool, don't eat it. Okay, thanks, Joe, for that tip. We love you all, Shrewsbury kids. Make sure to tune in every Friday on our Facebook page to watch Fabulous Fridays with Faith. Joe and I love you all so very much, and we hope you have a super Sunday. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you, Fabulous Faith. Kids, be sure to check out my friend Fabulous Faith on Fridays on Facebook coming this week. The church office remains closed to the public, but you can still call Facebook message or email and a staff member will be available to get back to you. All other church events and activities are still postponed, but we want you to keep joining us at 1015 on Sundays for our weekly worship broadcast. And don't forget, Pastor Sproul continues to post a daily devotional on our Facebook page. Hey, this is Commander Mike, still hanging out here at home. Hope all you and your families are still safe. Just wanted to give you an update on Camparama and just let you know that they're postponed it for a year at least, maybe two. If you want to read more about it, go to the National Rangers website and you can read about it there. Hopefully you guys are all reading your Bible still and staying safe. Commander Mike signing out. As the Lord leads you to give back to Him through your tithes and offerings that support the ministry here at Shrewsbury Assembly and other missions around the world, you can mail your gifts directly to the church office at 234 North Main Street, or you can send it through your bank's online bill pay. You can also check out PushPay, our convenient and safe online giving app. Thank you for your faithfulness and generous support of the work of the Lord here at Shrewsbury Assembly. Good morning. 
I'm Ron Blevins. I'm here on behalf of the Board of Deacons. A few weeks ago, we announced that we had unanimously agreed on a lead pastor candidate to bring forward to the congregation for approval and that we felt that strongly that he was God's choice to be our next leader. It was our plan to wait until the restrictions preventing large gatherings were lifted so that we could meet as a congregation. It now appears that those restrictions are not going to be lifted anytime soon. With guidance from the Pendell district officials, we have decided to bring our candidate forward for approval by the active members of our congregation. We will do so in a manner which complies with our bylaws. I want to be very clear. We are very appreciative of Pastor Sproul's excellent sermons and daily devotions. We have been richly blessed. However, the board feels that we need a full-time pastor to lead and coordinate the many outreaches of the church during these difficult times. This week, the voting members of our church will receive an official announcement of an election to be held on May 17th. Now, who is a voting member? Our bylaws state that any active member of the congregation can vote. An active member is one who has gone through the formal process of joining the church and actively and regularly attends and supports the activities of the church. If you are an active member, you will receive, an, and, and if we have your email address, you will receive an email notification of the upcoming business meeting this week. The rest of you will receive it by U.S. mail. Over the course of the next few weeks, we will introduce you to our selected candidate and his family. On Sunday, May 17th, our candidate will give the sermon and play a major role in our live stream service. At noon that same day, we will conduct a very brief online business meeting during which there will be an online voting opportunity. Those members who don't have online access or are not comfortable voting in that manner will receive a mail-in ballot. The results of the election will be announced on Friday, May 22nd. Assuming that the candidate is approved by a two-thirds majority of the members who vote, Pastor Sproul's final sermon will take place on May 24th. During that service, we will honor him and thank him with a special love offering. Our new pastor's first Sunday with us would be May 31st. We pray for guidance guidance during this process. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to call me directly at 717-487-8005 or reach out to any board member. Thank you for your continued overwhelming support through these unprecedented times. God bless you all. Thank you for giving us a few moments of your time so that we can share what's going on for you. You can also stay up to date with us by following us on Facebook. Now, enjoy the service. Please give a warm welcome to our guest pastor, the Reverend Dennis Sproul. I heard a cute story recently about a man who stood on the side of the road. He was hitchhiking on a very dark night in the middle of a storm. The night was rolling and no cars passed. The storm was so strong that he could see only a few feet ahead of him. Suddenly, he saw a car come toward him and stop. The guy, without thinking about it, got in the car, closed the door to realize that nobody was behind the wheel. The car started out slowly. The guy looked at the road and saw a curve coming his way. Scared and startled, he started praying, and he begged for his life. 
He hadn't come out of shock when just before he hit the curve, a hand appeared through the window and moved the wheel. The guy was paralyzed in terror. He watched how the hand appeared every time a curve was upon him. He gathered strength by each moment and finally got out of the car and ran to the nearest town. Wet and in shock, he ran into the cantina and asked for a strong drink and started telling everybody about the horrible experience he had just gone through. A silence enveloped everybody when they realized the guy was crying and he wasn't drunk. After half an hour later, two guys walked into the cantina, that same cantina, and one said to the other, look, there's that character who climbed into the car while we were pushing. We all go through unexplainable and difficult situations that perhaps nobody will ever understand. Listen to the apostle Paul as he wrote to the church at Corinth. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble, which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we despaired even for our lives. He wrote again in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but we are not forsaken. We are cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing in our body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. There have been many years that have passed since the Hurricane Katrina leveled its path on the city of New Orleans. We were blown away by the images of devastation and the loss of life. We sat speechless watching all of the surreal scenes and reviews that came out of that tragedy. One of five devastating hurricanes that have happened to the United States in the last five years. Christians were not immune. They and their churches were hit very hard. Ch churches and synagogues have gone through shootings and despair. Our unexplainable coronavirus that none of us seem to have even a handle on yet this morning. It's a lot like 9-11 years ago when God got America's attention through a tragedy and I believe he is getting America's attention once again. And we have been given a chance as a nation to turn back to God. We feel helpless, but there's something that we can all do. We can all pray. I've entitled my message this morning, Gone with the Wind. Name of a old movie that used to be watched by many people. But I want to take an aspect of that phrase this morning and, and help us to understand that when the difficulties of life come our way, that we do not have to grab tail and run. We do not have to be blown about by the winds that surround us. And we'll talk about that in just a few minutes. The winds of trouble are not new to God's people. The Bible is filled with stories of those in trouble. Let me give you a few, if I might. The Hebrew children and their fiery furnace experience. David, who fled from Saul, the jealous king who wanted to kill uh, one of his very own. Samson, who had his eyes put out. Daniel, who walked through a den of lions. Joseph, who was cast into prison. We mentioned some of these the other night in our prayer service. Paul, who was shipwrecked and beaten with stripes. Peter, who was sent to prison and later died for the cause of Christ. John the Apostle, 
who was exiled at Patmos. James, who lost his head. And Peter, crucified upside down. Pastor, why? And I've been asked this question, why do the righteous suffer? Why is it that they face the same things as everyone else in the world? Well, the rain falls on the just and the unjust. Listen to the psalmist in Psalm 34, 19 that says, The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him out from them all. Clyde Gordon, who was completely paralyzed from his neck down, edited a magazine called The Triumph. In that magazine, listen to his words. He says, Christ is no security against storms, but he is the perfect security during the storm. He does not promise an easy passage, but he does guarantee a safe landing. Someone else said, the road to success is always under construction. It seems that those who seem to have it hard always get more done. Paul alluded to that in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. One of my favorite verses in the New Testament. There is no temptation that has ever overtaken you, but what is common to mankind. God is Faithful. He will not let you to be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will provide a way out so that you will be able to endure it. There was an old preacher of yesteryear who made a comment that I coined a number of years ago and want to repeat it again this morning. We ought to be good to everybody because everybody seems to be going through a difficult time together. God is no respecter of persons. He has no pets. In spite of this, we sometimes feel like victims. It seems that we suffer far more than others. But this is simply not the case. Our hearts go out to those this morning who are in deep uh, uh, grief, who are engulfed by loss of life. But what can we learn about them and ourselves this morning? Let me give you seven quick ways, and I won't spend but a few minutes on each one. Seven ways that God uses a surge of problems to get our attention and to work in our lives. Certainly, we don't want to go through this epidemic, this pandemic, without something wonderful happening to the body of Christ during it, instead of uh, wanting to fly away with the wind to become solid, knowing God is working in the midst of it, let me give them to you. First of all, I believe God uses those times to direct us. Sometimes God must light a fire under us to get us moving. Problems often point us in a new direction and motivate us to make some changes. Let me ask you this morning, does God have your attention? Are you listening to him? Are you watching God today? Proverbs chapter 20 verse 30 says, blows and wounds scrub away evil. And beatings purge the innermost being. You see, the world deceives us this morning. After a serious bout with trouble, we don't usually care as much about what people think of us. Pride is plowed under. The world loses its value. Like I said in the devotional this morning, the appetites of sin seem to lose their taste. God could have kept Daniel out of lion's den. He could have removed Paul and Silas from jail. The Hebrew children didn't have to walk through the fiery furnace. But listen to this. It was good for all these people to go through the experiences as we learn from reading God's word. The second thing God does, he uses these times to inspect us. <laughs> 
I don't know who quoted this, but my mom used to say it. People are like tea bags. If you want to know what's inside of them, just drop them in hot water. God has never, has ever uh, tested your faith with a problem, I'm sure. I'm sure we all have faced that. What do problems reveal about us? James chapter 1, verses 2 and 3 says, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know, get that, you know that the testing uh, of my brethren, to count it all joy when you fall into divers' temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience. We've all had to be patient. Many people to stay home from their jobs. Many people to have been disconnected and are not going to church together. They've had to learn a, a new norm. That kind of difficulty seems to bring more faith in the hour of need and works patience in all of us. There was a Saturday morning. The story is told of a seven-year-old boy who was playing in the front yard garden in the middle of the flowers that were in bloom. He was trying to catch the butterflies in his net, and suddenly there was a bee that latched itself uh, in a position, buzzing straightway, landing on the back of the palm of his hand. That busy bee stung him, and he lurched, crying to his mom in the kitchen, who was cooking pancakes, making his morning snack. I hate bees, mommy, I hate bees. The little boy angrily muttered to his mom, I wish God would have never created bees, he said furiously. The mom snobbishly threw a glimpse of her complaining son, saw it, and she put the four pieces of the freshly cooked pancakes on his plate and pushed them toward her son. Wait a minute, son, don't eat them. Let me pour some of this pure honey that I just bought yesterday on your pancakes. The little boy was feasting on the pancakes, dipping them in honey that flowed on his plate. And he looked at his mom when she asked, how's the honey, Johnny? Oh, mom, it is so good. Mom lifted Johnny to her lap and started stroking the bee-stung hand with her other hand and looking eye to eye into her son's eyes, said with a smile, you know, Johnny, the bee that stung you is the same bee that brought the honey. The boy looked at his mom's eyes with a sheepish, sheepish smile and then these words came out of her mouth. Pain is inevitable, but misery is optional. God doesn't always still the storm, doesn't always remove the sting of the bee, but he knows how in the midst of the storm to calm the sailor down. Third of all, he uses trouble to correct us. There are some lessons we learn only through pain and only through failure, and we've all experienced that at one time or another in our lives. It's likely, as a child, your parents told you not to touch the hot stove, <laughs> but you probably learned by being burned. Sometimes we only learn the value of something when we lose it. The psalmist knew this in Psalm 119, verse 71. It was good for me to be afflicted that I might learn your word. I might learn, he used the word, decrees. Richard Foster was a person that was quoted a lot in yesteryear and is even quoted a lot today. This is what he said. Superficiality is a curse of our age. The doctrine of instant satisfaction is a primary spiritual problem in our lives. The desperate need today is not for a great number of intelligent people or gifted people, but deep-seated people who know that someone else is in control, not them. Fourth, 
God uses troubles to connect us. We've learned a lot about connection, haven't we? We've learned social distancing, and we've learned that even in the midst of social distancing, there has been a lot of social connecting. We connect when problems seem to come our way. Let's say someone dies in your family. Loved ones gather far and near to pay respects and to comfort each other. People want to be together. It's a, it's, a, it's a known fact why there's so many people today that are having difficulty. People want to be together in the midst of trouble, and they don't understand why they have to be further apart. When someone is seriously ill, what happens? Friends and neighbors gather in to check on them and make sure that all things are right. Trouble not only draws people together, it also draws them to the Lord. We don't seem to understand that when we're on easy street, sometimes we forget about the Lord. Sometimes we don't think of him as we should. This is why David said, because I was afflicted, I went astray. Psalm 119 verse 67. Many a person has called for the pastor in the middle of a time of trouble to make things right with God because they're afraid. Trouble draws people to church. Let's hope that after the pandemic has reached its apex and crawls down the other side and our churches are open again and the family of God is able to come together, that people will come together longing not just to be together as people, but to be together with God in the presence of that group of people. It's not uncommon to see the whole family show up at church, after a funeral, I've been there many times. I know that's true. Sometimes when people get bad news from the doctor, the first thing they do is they share their physical condition with someone else. And before long, it's on Facebook. It's posted for all the world to see because people are desperate to, for somebody to care for them in their hour of need. So you know what trouble does? It unifies the body of Christ when we allow it. Fifthly, God sends trouble to protect us. A problem can be a blessing in disguise if it prevents you from being harmed by something more serious. Let me show you what I mean. I read about a man who was fired for refusing to do something that was unethical that his boss had asked him to do. His unemployment was a problem. But it saved him from being convicted and sent to prison a year later when the management's actions were eventually discovered. There's nothing in the scripture that says that. Oh, but there is. Joseph said to his brothers, you intended to harm me. But God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done you know what that was? The saving of their lives and the saving of many other lives had that not happened. Think of where all of those people would have been in the time of famine that came to them all. One great preacher of yesteryear said, if you really want to be protected, God is the only true surge protector. He's the only one that doesn't blow up from the extreme elements that come against our souls. Sixthly, God sends difficulty to perfect us. Is there such a thing as a perfect storm? Problems, when responded to correctly, are character builders. God is far more interested in your character today than he is your comfort. He's far more interested in what you're going to be when we come through this than comfort for ourselves. Your relationship to God and your character are the only two things you're going to take with you into eternity. Get that. Your relationship with God and your character are the only two things that you're going to take with you into eternity. Romans chapter 5, verses 3 and 4. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. 
David said it best in Psalm chapter 71, verses 19 through 21. Oh God, who is like thee? Thou which has showed me great and sore troubles, quickens me again, and will bring me up again from the depths of the earth. You will increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. You know what we need today? We need God's comfort. Here we find the effects of the trouble that come our way. It was a blessing in disguise. Could that possibly be that God will get more glory and honor out of something that we've thought was devastation? Who knows? Time will tell. Paul emphasized these words. He said, all things work together for good to them that love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. You see, the graduate degree of spirituality will only come from those who are willing to attend the University of Hard Knocks. It's the difficulties of life that draw us to the Lord. It's the moments where God is present in us. A woman once wrote, the editor of Christianity Today, many, many years ago, and she said, one afternoon, my four-year-old niece, Paige, was playing with my six-year-old daughter, Ashley, and they started into an argument, which grew louder and louder and louder. She said, I was about to intervene when my daughter stormed down the stairs and said, Mom, I guess Jesus wants us to be the salt of the earth, and Paige seems to be the pepper. There's a whole lot of things that come against us. So I'm going to ask you this morning, are you being salt? Say, well, where are we supposed to? Absolutely. You are the salt of the earth. All of us as children of God have a decision to make. Are we going to become the salt of the earth as God wants us to? Or are we going to be the friction of the pepper that causes him difficulty? Good question to ask ourselves. Last but not least, God sends problems to project us. The surge of trouble focuses on the outwardly, on what is most important. It furthers God's cause. Listen to Paul again as he writes. He was such a magnificent apostle, such a magnificent writer. I overheard someone make a statement a number of years ago that Paul couldn't have been very spiritual or he wouldn't have had all the problems he had. Let me tell you something. There wasn't anybody greater than him in the New Testament except Jesus Christ. And listen to his words, what he says. I would that you should understand, brethren, that the things which have happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel. In other words, all the pain I suffered, all the difficulties, shipwrecked and beaten and left for half dead, all those things were for the furtherance of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for God to make manifest the fact that he gives us songs in the night. He must first make that night. The Weather Bureau in the Caribbean uses planes to help keep back the, or, or to keep track on the weather. These planes have learned how to take advantage of the cyclone winds in that area. When they go north, they get out on the fringes of the cyclone winds and take advantage of what we call the tailwinds. They actually ride the fringe of the storm and save time and gasoline. Then coming back south, they get on the outer edge and take advantage of the same storm to go in the opposite direction. God gives us an illustration in nature. Did you know that an eagle knows when a storm is approaching long before it arrives? The eagle will fly to some high spot and wait for the winds to come. Then when the storm hits, it sets its wings so that the wind will pick it up and lift it above the storm. 
While the storm rages below, the eagle soars above the storm. The eagle does not escape the storm. It simply uses the storm to lift its wings higher. It rises on the winds that bring the storm. When the storms of life come upon us, we can rise above them by setting our minds toward God. I think I heard that a few minutes ago. The storms do not have to overcome us. Rather, we allow God's power to lift us above the storms. It's not the burdens of life that weigh us down. It's how we handle those storms. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. But those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will soar upon wings like eagles. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. I want you to know this morning that even amidst your trouble, God is at work in you. Even when you do not recognize it or understand it, he's in the storm with you. He's calling you to rise above the storm, to become, a, to become a water walker, not a boat person who enjoys the safety of, of the vehicle, but stepping out by faith, knowing that God in the midst of your difficulty helps you to make it through. He's calling you to rise above it. Keep your eyes on the Lord during the storm so it doesn't get you down because it will. We read in James chapter 1, verse 12, Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, I want to stand the test. I want to come out of this thing better than what I ever went into it. I want to stand the test. I want to be the person that receives the crown of life that the Lord has promised to all those who love him. Those who go through fire and water should remember that that's God's way of refining us. I don't like that, Pastor. None of us do. I don't like the cleansing part. None of us do. But you know what? It's good for you, and it's good for God's glory. I hate to bring up old hymns, but I grew up with them as a small boy. And I remember one they used to sing many a Wednesday night, Seemed to be Pastor Schaefer, who is now in glory today. Seemed to be Brother Schaefer's one of his favorite hymns that he would sing. And the chorus went like this. Some through the water. Some through the flood. Some through the fire. But all through the blood. Some through great sorrow. But God gives a song in the night season and all the day long. Trouble is simply the factory that God is using to manufacture the right kind of product to be produced in each one of us. People have laughed at me over the years because I've always been a person that loved poetry. And I found a, a spiritual piece that I would like to read and bring my message to a conclusion this morning. He sat by a fire of a seven-fold heat as he watched by the precious oar. And closer he bent with a surging gaze as he heeded it more and more. He knew he had ore that could stand the test. He wanted the finest gold to mold as a crown for the king to wear, set with gems with a price untold. So he laid the gold in the burning fire, though we fain would have asked him nay. And he watched the dross that we had not seen as it melted and passed away. And the gold grew brighter and yet more bright, but our eyes were so dim with tears. We saw but the fire, not the master's hand, and questioned with anxious fears. Yet our gold shone out with a richer glow, and it mirrored a form above of him bent over the fire. 
unseen by us with a look of an ineffable love. Can we think that it pleases his loving heart to cause us a moment of pain? Oh, no. But he saw through the present cross the bliss of eternal gain. So he waited there with a watchful eye, with a love that is strong and sure. And his gold did not suffer a bit more heat than was needed to make it pure. Remember that God has a purpose for everything. In times of trouble, God directs us. He inspects us. He corrects us. He connects us. He uh, protects us. He perfects us. And he projects us. When Adam and Eve were in trouble, God stepped in and met their need and gave them covering for their nakedness and their sin. Because of his obedience, Noah's problems were solved by a God who spared he and his family because he walked with God. He found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Joseph was released from prison and the record was set straight with his brothers. The children of Israel were delivered as they crossed the Red Sea. Elijah got God's help in seeing the end of drought. Paul and Silas were set free from a Philippian jail. And and Hurricane Katrina watched God's saving hand in motion on the Gulf Coast, longing to touch the lives of broken people that needed his healing. Both the believers and even the unbelievers, I believe, realized that it was God who had taken them safely through. Let me illustrate before I pray this morning. An old seaman once made this statement. statement. He said, during the fiercest of storms, the only way that a ship will ever survive is to keep its nose pointing straight into the wind. See, if you try to turn the ship to the left or the right, the the ship would most likely capsize. If you try to run from the wind, the waves could surge over the stern. I believe that's good advice for us as a body of Christ this morning. If you're listening by live stream to this message this morning, you say, but pastor, you don't understand what I'm going through. You're right, I don't. Only God does. But I can tell you this. That whenever you're in a storm, that's not the time to run away from God. That's the time to run into the loving arms of your heavenly Father who knows all about you. Instead of turning straight toward him, many people turn away from him. Instead of seeking his face, they seek other things in its place. I'm here to tell you this morning that you need to seek God's face in the midst of trouble And ask him, what are you trying to work in me, God? What is it that you're trying to perform? You see, when you're in the sunshine, you may have faith. (laughs) That's easy. But when when you're in a storm, you must have faith. It's not whether you want to or whether you don't. The only way to get through the storm is to trust God. So if you're in the storm of storms this morning in your spiritual life and you need God's help, let me tell you that he is in your storm right now. He's walking with you through the difficulties that you face. And you and me together can have God's hand on our lives. Instead of being gone with the wind, we're in the hands of the Heavenly Father who knows what is best for us, and he will work far more through us and in us than anyone would ever be able to imagine. Let's pray. Our Father, we know that the difficulties of this pandemic that has been upon us, and we've tried not to overplay the situation that we face and at the same time not try to think under what is going on. Help us, Lord Jesus, with all the things that we don't understand in the midst of our trouble and the midst of our trial, that we keep our eyes 
upon the captain because God, you have sent that captain, Jesus Christ, to take us safely through into Souls Harbor one day. And we know, Lord, that his eyes see far reaching into the distance more than we. He knows what the next set of currents are going to bring. He knows the waves that are upon us. He knows the condition of the ship. He knows exactly what ne that needs to be done. It's him that we need to keep our eyes on. We pray this morning, Lord, that we'll submit to you and say, God, whatever you're trying to bring about to America, please help America to remember that the storm may be great, but the storm walker is greater. Help us to keep our eyes on the person that will get us safely through. And if there are people today that have never made their peace with God, that this will be the moment in the midst of the trouble and the trial, they'll set their eyes upon the only thing that will matter if it should suddenly come to an apex and end tomorrow, that Lord Jesus, our eyes will still be upon you. When it's over, Lord, help us not to forget that the government didn't get us through it. The president didn't get us through it. Congress didn't get us, through it, get us through it. Jesus Christ, our great high priest, got us through it. You're the one that came on the scene, oh Lord, to help us. And so we turn our hearts to you this morning and we ask you that in the midst of the storms, we're not gonna be gone with the wind, but we're gonna be built solidly upon a rock that will not move. And that rock is Jesus Christ, our Lord. We ask your blessing upon all of the people who have watched today and those that will watch later. Let your presence abound in their lives more and more. And through all of what we face, have your will and your way in our lives that out of what will come in sudden chaos will be suddenly the sunshine of your great love upon us and the glory of the Lord will be revealed throughout it all. We give you thanks and we give you praise. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. Thank you for joining us today. We pray your heart was encouraged in the Lord. Shrewsbury Assembly is here for you. If you have a prayer need, you may call or email the church office, or you can message us on Facebook. A church staff member will be available to get back to you. We pray that you and your family stay well, have a safe and blessed week, and we will see you back here next Sunday at 1015.